Welcome to the Marshall Pruitt Podcast, brought to you by Cooper Tires and the Justice Brothers. I have a quick episode for you with Aero McLaren SP's two new drivers, Patricio Ward, your 2018 Indy Lights champion, your 2019 title winner at the same Andretti Autosport program, Oliver Askew, these two coming together at an average age of 21 to lead this program forward as it embraces youth over experience. Speaking with these two shortly after they completed their IndyCar teleconference, got into all manner of things, what they're expecting in 2020, how they might rely on one another, what the immediate future holds for the two of them as they get used to this big, big opportunity with Aero McLaren SP, and a couple of other items that you might find interesting or entertaining. All right, let's get going with Patricio Award, a.k.a. Pato, sometimes known as Potato, and... Well, he doesn't really have a good nickname yet, so we got to come up with one for Oliver Askew here on the Marshall Pruitt Podcast, brought to you by Cooper Tires and the Justice Brothers. Guys, this is something that for fans of young and emerging talent in IndyCar, those who stay plugged into what was long known as the Mazda Road to Indy, what we know as the Mazda a ladder of talent that was created. What we have today is the road to Indy. The two consecutive reigning Indy Lights champions coming together in a team. That's pretty exciting stuff. Tell me about just this general idea of the two of you getting to work together in what will be for you, Oliver, your true rookie season. And I'd say for you, Pato, despite doing, you know, six, seven races, this is going to be your first real chance to come in and do a first proper IndyCar season. Give me your general thoughts on getting to do this together. Yeah, it's, it's a dream come true. Um, first, first of all, thanks, thanks for having us. It's, it's, uh, it's great to be here. And yeah, Pato and I are, are really good friends and we're, we're excited uh, to, to start working with one another and to start, to start working with the team and, and to use their resources to uh, make ourselves better and to get ready for St. Pete, uh, especially for me as, as a true rookie, and um, yeah, you, you touched on touched on the road to Indy a bit there, and and I think that's that's what the system is, is supposed to provide. So um, I'm, I'm very happy to be representing um, the drivers coming up uh, with with uh, with you know not much not much uh, support behind them, and um, you know just ma- making it on 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 pure talent. So I'm, I'm very very happy to be representing the road to Indy here, and um, very excited for the future. It's it's a dream come true for sure. Yeah, I think um, I'm right where Oliver is. I think it's a very, it's a very special opportunity for both of us to grow with, you know, with the team. Um, but I think, you know, the the road to India gave us a perfect, uh, a perfect ground to, to really be ready to jump up. Um, you know, I think in the in the six races I got to do, um, you know, the switch is obviously you know bigger, better uh, race car, but it, it is. Uh, very similar to the lights car. So I think we're going to be getting along just fine. We're good friends. I'm looking forward to working with them, looking forward to helping whatever I can. Um, and I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a, a great year. And it's all about enjoying it. Let's talk about the paths to this opportunity. Start with you, Pato. So I swear we were standing at IndyCar spring training at Cirque to the Americas talking about ways for you to join the IndyCar series because you had planned to. There was a team that was fully intent on running you, and then their plans went sideways. You had to hustle, adapt, found a really great opportunity with Carlin Racing. Money certainly wasn't flush to secure the full season for you. Then you're wearing a Red Bull hat. And then you were off to Japan, and then you're back here. Tell us about this path, and maybe share for folks, despite your youth, despite all of these things, this has been a pretty crazy year with a really, maybe, even crazier outcome at the end, where now you have a full-time drive with what should be a very powerful organization. Yeah, it's been definitely a crazy year. Um, I think, I don't even think crazy gets close to what it actually was. Um, so much up and downs, but I think as a person, as a driver, 
um, as a businessman, I think in every, in every way I grew, um, learned, uh, ridiculous amounts of just different situations, different, different ways that you, you can go about stuff. And, um, and that, you know, even though this year, obviously the, the results that every driver looks for weren't really there. Um, I don't think a driver's, uh, season can get more challenging than what I had to go through this year. Um, and obviously, you know, the, the, the different categories the different cars, the different teams I got to experience and, and work with were, were something that I'm going to be, you know, I would, that I will cherish, but more than anything, I will always, um, you know, remember what I, what I learned. Uh, you can always learn new things. And, and I think that's the biggest thing to take away from this year. It's, it, it was a super crazy year. If you told me this was going to be happening at the end of the year, um, in February, which was when I, uh, got released from, from what I was supposed to be doing this year, I would have told you you were crazy. Um, so it's it's definitely been a crazy year, but I think, you know, back to what, I, what I've always believed in, that things happen for a reason. Um, I think I'm in a great place right now, and, and I'm looking forward to really just, you know, creating new relationships, memories, um, and just really just enjoying it because that's what it's all about. So Oliver, whereas we're happy for Pato because he had a lot of things go sideways, mostly due to his terrible personality, right? I mean, nobody really likes him, so it's not a surprise he's had all these problems. Uh, Kidding aside, for you, Oliver, you had this really interesting scenario play out where, for a number of years, you've had some really big supporters, not necessarily saying financial, but just you've had a lot of folks in the IndyCar series saying this ask you kid watch out when he gets here uh, you're going to pay attention he's going to make you stand up and notice and here you are not doing what we often see right with an indy lights champion going to a smaller team colton herta obviously going to the harding steinbrenner team great year but small team not a lot of resources before that we had ed jones not a lot of money starting out with a smaller team at dale coin racing it's not always the case when we have the Indy Lights champ coming out and stepping right into what I think we will expect uh, to be a winning team here very soon. Share thoughts on that, your trajectory of getting support and having a lot of people rooting for you and actually breaking the trend of having to start with maybe a smaller, underfunded, low-expectation team. Yeah, it's, it's an honor to be here, and, and I think um, the team is is going to be uh, forced to, to be reckoned with, I think, uh, with with the amount of resources that we have now, with with the new partnerships, with with uh, with McLaren, and also also Aero Electronics pushing us to to uh, to win races. It's it's uh, it's going to be really interesting, and and I know that you know we we have the we have the right people around us, and um, it's it's been a it's been a whirlwind whirlwind couple of years, and um, like I said before, it's it's uh, it's it's an honor to be to be representing. Um, you know the road to Indy and, and the kids, kids coming up who who have a similar background to me and and who really dedicate their their career to to making it to IndyCar. You know, if reach reach for the sky. It's uh, that's that's all I can say. And it's um, if you if you were to tell me that you know I'd be I'd be racing IndyCar four years ago, it's it'd, it'd be hard to believe. Even Indy Lights looked so far away. So um, I'm, I'm very happy to have met the people along the way that that I have and. Um, you you know just just as well as anybody else it's it's about being in the right place at the right time and taking advantage of of the opportunities that we have and and really preparing um and dedicating um, your, your your time to to get giving it everything and and i think that's that's what really got me here and um and and nothing's nothing nothing's going to change you know my my uh i've actually moved to to indianapolis this uh, this past week and um i'm that was that was a huge goal of mine just to just to be based here and, and I can't wait to spend a lot of time with with uh, with the crew. It's um, here at Aero McLaren SP, only about 15 minutes away from me, and um, yeah, just very exciting times for me and, and and my supporters. Let's close here in a question or two, guys. So if we look at another rookie who had a very successful campaign last season, that being Santino Ferrucci, he had the good fortune 
of sitting next to a four-time champ car champion, right? One of the, the greats in Sebastian Bourdais. The two of you are going in at a at an average age of 21 and, you know, a handful of combined IndyCar races. Maybe one of you could share some thoughts on, all right, maybe we don't have that seasoned IndyCar veteran to draw from. Do you consider that a limitation? Is it a concern that uh, really it's the two of you having to lift each other up as rookies to be as formidable as you hope to be? Um, I think, I don't think we're at a disadvantage, to be honest. I think we, um, you know, we're, we're young, we're extremely hungry, we want to do well, and I think we're both going to be pushing each other um, ridiculous amounts, and I think that's going to be what is going to be, you know, driving the team, driving ourselves um, and I think that's what, what ultimately that's going to bring, um, what we want. Um, and I think, um, you know, not necessarily you need someone that's super experienced in the team. I think we can, um, you know, learn from each other and the team has a, you know, a very big database that we can, uh, that we can go into, uh, with lots of information and from past years. Um, so I think we, I think we, we have everything we have. I mean, I think we have everything we need uh, to be able to succeed, uh, to learn as quick as we can. Um, and, I, you know, there's great people behind us that, that are going to make sure that, uh, that, you know, is available to us. Oliver, why don't you share some insights on what the coming days and weeks and such will be like for the two of you? How soon do you guys expect to get out into a car? Uh, what's the process of, of onboarding yourselves fully, whether it's going and doing sponsor engagements, fitness, uh, getting to know everybody's names at the shop, etc. For folks who don't know what it's like for someone coming in brand new to their first year of IndyCar, how do you envision, say, the rest of, uh, the, rest of the year panning out for you? Yeah, you said it. Uh, my, my number one priority right now is, is learning every, everyone's name in, in the shop. We have a lot of, a lot of hungry guys working here and it's, it's been, uh, I've, I've been at the shop the past, past couple of days, um, uh, driving the, I've been driving their pit stop car and, and just, and just gelling with all the, all the crew. Um, it's, it's a fantastic group of people for sure. And, uh, the, the scheduling is, is changing by the day. It's, it's gotten a lot, a lot, uh, a lot more hectic uh, over the past couple of days, and uh, we, we plan to be in Coda this weekend um, with with McLaren and their their Formula One team. And um, uh, after that, you know, it's it, the schedule is going to be changing a lot. So I, I can't I can't say what we're going to be doing after that. Let's close on this, and Pato, why don't you take it? So your former Andretti Autosport Indy Lights teammate Colton Herta redefined what we would expect from a true IndyCar rookie in 2019. Pole positions, wins, etc. Is that a crazy expectation for you to set for yourself, Oliver, for you as well? Did Colton, I don't say ruin things, but <laughs> uh, did your fellow uh, Andretti Autosport, uh, former teammate there, did he set things high enough to where you want to have it, but you don't want to say it? Or do you think, do you feel like this team might be able to uh, be spraying champagne or, or celebrating pole positions with uh, the two of you this year? What are your expectations? Um, I know that the team behind us is, is very capable. Um, and, you know, I, I know we can achieve it. So I think it's just, taking things how they come to us um, and, and really just, you know, dedicate ourselves to the job in front of us. And I know we can, uh, that we can achieve great things. Um, obviously we, we want to make our own paths um, and we will always strive for, for good and great things. Um, but yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't see it out of the, out of the ordinary. I mean, we, um, we've, we've been in the sport for quite a, quite a long time, even if we're young. Um, and you know, I think I, um, I showed it in Sonoma in my first IndyCar race that, you know, the cars are quite similar and we can, we can be very competitive if we're blending in, uh, blending in right with the car. So if, if we have everything 
um, you know, that's set for our driving style and we were meshing well, um, I don't see why not those results aren't going to come to us. Oliver, how about you? What's your mindset for next year? How do you end your rookie season feeling satisfied? Yeah, for, for me, the expectations are clear. I need to, to be doing what I always have and, you know, front load this, this off season so that I, I show up in, in St. Pete feeling like it's not my first IndyCar weekend. And that's, that's the goal right now. And there's so many, there's so many different elements that come along with, with being an IndyCar driver. Um, you know, you can go from, from pit stops now and, and out laps in laps and fuel saving and, you know, managing managing the weekend where I'm going to be a lot more busy than I than I have been in the past on, on these uh, IndyCar weekends. So um, it's it's those things right now that uh, that you know the coaching staff at Aaron McLaren SP will will help me with. And um, as as long as I focus on the little things, I mean, I, I think that um, my ability and uh, and, the, and the people around me will be able to deliver results. I'd say that's a total failure for an answer. I was wanting to hear, kick the crap out of Pato. All right, guys. Well, thanks as always. Looking forward to seeing the two of you in action. 